Hi, my name is Mindy. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a book review today from August the oh, no, I keep, I keep saying August, October the 9th through October the 15th. So, um, first thing I have to share is this Funko Pop Cinderella that I picked up. I got, um, I do, um, a my point, I do my points, which is you get, um, points for each time you click on, um, a certain ad to go to a certain, um, uh, sorry, website. And, um, I had collected enough to get myself a $10 gift card to Amazon. So I used that to buy this and I thought she was kind of cute. This was new. It just came out, um, on Friday, last Friday. So, um, I think she's, I like the Cinderella. She'll go with my Tinkerbell and my, um, Mary Poppins. So, and the next thing I did, my husband and I went to Ollie's last night, O-L-L-I-E-S, and they have, um, a very, they are a really deeply discounted, um, store, and they have a really big section of books. So, I picked up this bind-up, um, the Lancaster Burning Trilogy by Linda Byler, and it's an Amish trilogy, and it has Fire in the Night, Davy's daughter and the witnesses and it's about um, somebody is setting barns Amish barns on fire and so it's a whole trilogy about that I haven't haven't read any of this or heard much about this but I thought it would looked interesting and stuff and I probably would be picking up the audiobooks so my husband likes to read audiobooks so well um, he, he was interested in this, but he's not a big reader, so, um, this was only $3.99, so that's how, you know, so each, each book is $1.33, so, and the rest of these books I got, they are for review, and the first book I got is called Blackbird by Anna Carey, um, Things I Know Are True. I am in Los Angeles. I work up. I woke up on a train tracks at the Vermont Sunset Station. I'm a teenage girl. I have long black hair. I have a tear, tattoo of Blackbird on my right arm with the letters and numbers FNVO2198, and people are trying to kill me. So I thought that sounded a little interesting. And the next book I got is Seventh Grade Life in Tights by Brooks Benjamin. Um, all Dylan wants to be is a real dancer, and if he wins a summer scholarship at Dance Explosion, he's on his way. The problem is his dad wants him to play football, and Dylan's freestyle crew, the Dizzy Freaks, say, says that dance studios are for sellouts. His friends want him to kill it at the audition so he can turn around and tell the studio just how wrong their rules and creative, creativity strangling ways are. At first, Dylan is willing to go along with his crew's plan, even convincing one of the snobbiest girls at school to work with him on his technique. But as Dylan's dancing improves, he wonders, what if studios aren't the enemy? And what if he actually has a shot at winning the scholarship? Dylan's life is about to get crazy on and off the dance floor in this kid-friendly, humor, humorous debut. Okay. Now this is for Metal Grade. And then the next book I have is All the Pretty Things by Edie Wadsworth. It says, I don't know how old I was the night the trailer burned down or if the rumor was true that daddy was the one who set it on fire. By the ripe old age of 10, Edie Wadsworth knew how to handle love drunk with confidence and even compassion. Edie loved her daddy with all her, that was in her, even as an Appalachian childhood was being colored by neglect, hunger, and how many beers daddy had devoured by noon. When you think through the fire like this, can a fire like this can beauty rise from the ashes all the pretty things is the searing story of Edie's soul-searching journey out of the rubble of her childhood 
through the devastating cho choices of her adulthood and into a life of healing and forgiveness that she never dreamed possible. It's a story about a determined young woman who became a doctor against all odds, how she found the strength to confront her past, and how she finally encountered the love of her true father in the long and ro long road at ahead. Okay, and the next book is called Wild Mountain Skies by Susan May um, Warren. The last search and rescue helicopter pilot Casey Ferry needs upon needs upon returning home to Mercy Falls, Montana is to run into her mistakes. After a devastating crash during her recent military tour, her life in Afghanistan, she's emotionally broken but ready to start putting her life back together. She just wants to reconnect with her teenage daughter and spend the summer working as the new lead pilot of the Peak Rescue in Glacier National Park. But she mistakes, but her mistakes can't so easily be forgotten because Ben King is also back in town. Country music star Ben King abandoned his past when he moved to Nashville 13 years ago to start his career. He hoped to heal his, heal his broken heart caused by losing the woman he loved. But when his father is injured, Ben is called home to help manage peak rescue during his res recovery. He doesn't realize his father has ulterior motives until his old flame, Casey, walks into his house and back into his heart. Now with Mercy Falls in a state of emergency due to flash floods, Casey and Ben will have to work together to save lives. But when secrets are uncovered and old hurts rise to the surface, will they walk away again or can they find a different ending to their country love song? I thought that kind of sounded a little interesting. And the next book is Where Two Hearts Meet by Liz Johnson. In her kitchen at Rose's Red Door Inn, executive chef Caden Holt is calm, collected, and competent. But when her boss asks her to show off their beautiful island to impress a visiting travel writer and save the inn, Caden is forced to, to face a world which much bigger than her kitchen and a man who makes her wish she was beautiful. Journalist Adam Jacobs is on a forced sabbatical on Prince Edward Island. He's also on assignment to uncover a story. Instead, he's falling in love with his island red, red shores and Caden sweets. When Caden discovers Adam isn't who she thought he was, she realizes that the article he's writing could do more than ruin the end's chances for survival. It might also break her heart. So, and then the next book is called The Remnant by Monty Wolverton. In the year 20,069, the apocalypse came and went wild, but Jesus didn't show up, as some expected. Instead, a cataclysmic war, national disasters, and pandemic eradicated 90% and pan pandemics eradicated 90% of Earth's population. Now, in 2131, a totalitarian government rules the world from the majestic opposite capital of Carthage, Tunisia. Blamed for igniting the war, religion and religious books are banned. Citizens who will not renounce their religion are sent to work camps. They're sent to work camps. Grant Cochran, imprisoned in a bleak petroleum camp in which, in what was once North Dakota, leads his family and friends to escape and embark on a long, dangerous quest for a Christian community. There are resources in, in this journey, a cherished page torn from the now banished Bible, a remnant of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount handed down from Grant's grandparents. Okay, and the next book I got is a nice finished copy of One Man's Rescue Mission That Changed the Course of De World War II. Indestructible, a true story by John R. Bruning. That sounded interesting. And then I got this book by Florence Nightingale by Catherine Reef. This is a um, biography of 
the nurse and it looks a little bit like some of the um, vampire books you see the cover but it's not it's a it's an actual autobiography of Mark Nightingale. when I was younger I really really enjoyed reading about her so I thought I would um, I thought I would pick this up and read it it has some nice illustrations in it and you can see that that's people in beds and stuff just like children and things so sounds interesting so I will be reading making that up and reading it and the next book I got is called Dead Letters by Kate Dolan Leach um, Ava has her reasons for running away to Paris but when she receives the shocking news that her twin sister Zelda is dead she is forced to return home to her family's failing vineyard in upstate New York Knowing Zelda's penchant for tricks and deception, Ava is surprised when she receives her twin's cryptic message from beyond the grave. Following her sister's trail of clues, and Ava immerses herself in Zelda's circle of unreliable friends and lovers, and soon finds herself confronted with the dark family legacies and twisted relationships. Is Zelda trying to punish Ava for leaving, or is she simply trying to write her own ending? Okay, and the last book I have here is called The Friendship Experiment by Aaron Tian. And Madeline Little is Harriet the Spy with a lab note and lab notebook in the debut novel full of heart, humor, and a dash of science. Everything has been wrong for our aspiring scientist Madeline Little, and she's dreading the start of sixth grade. Now that her best friend has moved to private school, Maddie has no one to hang out with except a bunch of middle school misfits. And if you add Maddie's blood disorder, which causes public humiliation at the very worst times, it's all a formula for disaster. At least she can rely on her standard operating procedures and observations and step-by-step -step instructions she writes down in her top-secret lab notebook. Procedures for how to escape a conversation with her mother. How to avoid the weirdos at school. It's all in there. Fortunately, no one will ever read it. But does science have all the answers? This future scientific genius might have to experiment with kindness, comp compromise, and new definitions of friendships before middle school starts to make sense. And of course, this is a middle grade novel. So, and it comes out in November. I forgot to say when all these came out. That comes out in November. This comes out in March of next year. Florence Nightingale comes out on the 8th of November. <laughs> Indestructible comes out, came out on the 11th. <laughs> um, the remnant is already out. Where Two Hearts Meet is already out. Wild Mountain Skies is already out. All the Pretty Things. Not sure. I think that's already out. Seventh Grade Life in Tights comes out April. Came out in April. Um, Blackbird. came out um, <coughs> in August of 2014. Hmm. And this is already out. So, Okay, that's all I got for this week for my book haul. So, hope you all have a good, great week. This is my birthday week, so I get to go to a mortgage board tomorrow where it's um, I get a free meal and my husband has to pay for his but but it's a nice it's a nice place to go and they have a lot big selection of different types of food and stuff and tomorrow I should be I should be getting at least one of my birthday presents if not two and I will do a video on those if I get when I get them so okay have a nice week bye